We are Squawking Dead. And uh, welcome to the mid-season finale show. And we are ready to rumble in the jungle with our uh, guest participants. A coffee-less coffee-backed show uh, with a whole bunch of people in the chat, free to the public. People will be popping on. Screen shares will probably end up happening. I will end up laughing my ass off if it does, and I hope it doesn't happen. <laughs> It's going to be a nightmare to edit out. But in the meantime, <laughs> we waited a little while so that we can discuss this episode uh, so that you guys could all get your notes ready. Just a note from the top in terms of housekeeping. I am going to try to avoid talking about sneak peeks so that we can do another episode on sneak peeks into the rest of the half of the season because a lot of things are quote unquote given away. There's a lot of like scandalous topics that, that uh, we're bound to talk about. Another note, we have got a sale going on in the merch store it's 35 percent off if you're worried about international shipping don't because uh t public has like delivery centers basically all over the world mostly europe and us check it out see if the if the shipping is actually a little bit more reasonable because it is more reasonable in the uk than it is in the us by the way wow it's really interesting weird. and it ships mm. way faster so i don't get mm. it i'm not going to try to get it but it's mm -hmm. our little black friday sale going on right now 35 percent off everything not just shirts. At the end of the episode, last episode on episode seven, I honest to God thought that Dante only choked him out and made him pass out. I, to my deepest heart, did not believe that he killed him until I saw the talking dead. And I was like, no, he's not dead. He's not dead. And a hundred percent. We should definitely start. A hundred percent. I didn't think he was really, I thought he just passed out. I thought he just like did the choke and hold. made him pass out. And oh, I didn't, yeah. I didn't want to believe it. And it was so yeah. heartbreaking yeah. to see him coming after Coco yeah. and having Rosita like that look she gives him right before she stabs him I'm like oh my gosh that's terrible mm -hmm. and I just didn't want to believe it that was my first thought was the whole thing I'm like I still even the talking dad even announced it I'm like it's not true it's not true the sneak, and then, and by so, the way. Yeah. when we recorded our oh, last yeah, episode that's right. that's right well yeah I fell asleep during the talking dead so I, I, must, did I might have missed it <laughs> I might have missed it, but it wasn't until I saw him like coming out and I'm like, no, it's true. So that was the first thing I thought. So, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Crying. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Crying. I'm leaving well, that and in I was now. Really happy. Well, and I was really happy to know that they didn't drag this whole Dante thing out. Like, when are we going to find out? When is everyone going to find out that he's the one that's the whisperer? I'm so glad that it was just done and done and Dante was it, Rosita found out, and she was badass and all that stuff, so... Well, she really was. I, yeah. I was going to say that, like, that's a very interesting take because um, it's it not only didn't drag out, but they like got rid yeah. of him in the same episode. Yeah. In the same episode, yeah. and I mean, I and I was also worried that they're going to do that whole thing like they did in the barn back in season two. I, I thought they were like going to have this thing where they'd be split between killing him and keeping him and killing him, keeping him. And I'm like, oh, mm. Gabriel just took care of that. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> mm. yeah. Well, he was kind of banking on that too. He was like, oh, you're going to give me a try and all of that sort of stuff right. so I think I mean I'll be honest I was kind of bummed out about the direction and with Dante because of the fact that like Rach knows this when he first walked onto set we were so excited because as soon as right. he walked on and it was like Dante oh my god the character mm -hmm. and he talks like him he looks like him and it was like no oh. and then it just took a turn you know way left and it was right. like and it took it even further left do you think it had a lot to do with the fact that Lauren Cohan wasn't on isn't like on right now that maybe she, I mean maybe that love interest oh no maybe that, I, but but the thing is, it's like even up until like this mid season finale, there was a part of me that was like, is this like a character development thing? Is this sort of like he was manipulated by Alpha, but he's like, uh -huh. you know, this really like a kind of gamma sort of figure? Like I was still sort of like, well, you know, because the comic isn't great at developing some of these characters sometimes. So I thought to myself, most well, maybe, maybe, yeah, most times it's yeah. like, well, maybe this is part of his backstory development, and then it was like, oh no, he. It's just a hundred percent alpha or whatever. And so I was just like, wow, really? Man, that sucks. Because I was really I, hoping for more, you know? I absolutely applaud the writers for this, though, because they yeah. know they know us comic book writers I know, are going into I know. this thinking we know who this right. person is. And they yeah. were like, 
I, I really like yeah. Dante and I actually, I, I wrote hashtag no hope for Dante because no at first I really wanted them to turn out good, but yeah. Yeah. that you think that is because he was a doctor. And I think right. that the only reason why we trusted him and why Alexandrians trusted him because he was a doctor. And right. I think that I love how they said that on the show too. But he yeah, was very deceptive. But, yeah. but he was very deceptive though and really convincing, which is probably what made Gabriel over the edge to be like, you know what, this guy's like a right. a pathological liar. Like he looked at the video of the, his interview when he first came on, you know, like he was kind of mm-hmm. like trying to see like, what didn't I see? What yeah. didn't I pick up? You know, yeah, how did I miss this? You know, but it's like, no, this guy really, really was convincing, you know? So mm-hmm. it's like, you know, where do you go from there? It's like nowhere. What are you going to do? Put him on trial so he can manipulate and convince other people. Right. You know, it's like, Right. Can't risk that. Right. It actually goes back to what Sadiq did at the end of, uh, well, it was like the calm before where Sadiq kind of came up to everybody and just took the reins on any sort of paranoia that was going to happen and said, hey, they died, you know, saving us. They did. They just they died basically helping each other out. Sarah just said uh, on the heels of what Tom just said, uh, what, what if Dante was Madison? Then Sarah goes, if Alden isn't Dante and Dante isn't Dante, maybe Madison is Dante. Oh and then that's when all of our brains exploded. Yeah. Wow. I'm seeing it right now. Yeah. Did anybody else notice um where right in the, right in the beginning when we're when? we're watching Dante's journey, right? right. Mhm. And did anybody notice the campers he came across? Did that look familiar to anyone? Yeah. Yes. So yes, of. it's a, what they saw. Um yeah. remember up, they saw the saw skin laying down that earlier. You saw the aftermath of it. Yep. yep. Mm-hmm. What was the before like explain mm-hmm. the before math? The pre-math. So they just see a skin laying there. They like come up and they see all the clothes everywhere. And then the skin was on the ground and kind of just like what happened here pretty much. Right. The only thing I didn't understand is who like the naked body, like the naked body that was laying there. That was weird. Oh, yeah. That Mm -hmm. was weird. We didn't see that happen in Dante's little story. But he did. But he did. He did take the clothes. So yeah, to look a little bit more normal. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, that explains that. that. The walker skin is expensive. Explained because it is very, very unusual. Like the having a whole skin suit, mm-hmm. sort of, yeah, or skin apron, let's just say, or skin <laughs> it was like, armor. A, like a like a skin poncho, yeah, like a, yeah, like a skin poncho, <laughs> like a smock. Like remember when you got a smock before painting? Nobody uses that word smock anymore. Right? Am I wrong? You know what it reminded me of is one of those X-ray, the X-ray bibs. Yes. Uh, yeah, like that's exactly. a dentist. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a yeah. doctor. <laughs> <laughs> that's how we got was the he, idea, guys. Trust me. <laughs> so was he really a medic? Like that part of his story was true? I like, think he, so. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think so. Because I know Gabriel was kind of like, when he went to the cell, kind of asked him like, you know, I really liked you, you know, because he said he also had a kid, right? Yeah. So, I mean, I think that they did a really good job by like, you know, really, really like switching up Dante's story and really kind of like leading us down like, oh, yeah, but no, that's not like that. I'll, I'll give you guys one thing because I usually love it. I love it. I get such glee when the comics readers have like something to beef about like, that's not what the character does. <laughs> and then like, so, but like this time I was kind of like, well done, well done. And I'm not sure that I like like it but well done like i mean of course i like it because the way i feel right which is always a good thing when you can make me feel something what don't you like about it it's the fact that i wanted him around longer i did right and that's you, and that's you the thing to believe he was good yeah, yeah. exactly that, yeah. or His not good character. but like redeemable or right right because right. Right. Yeah. he's I, a shit shit heel but right even at the end he kind of did the same way because he said Sadiq wasn't part of the plan so he obviously right. liked right. him i mean he wasn't being the animal that was for his are he yeah. had feeling he had feelings for him not like in a romantic way but yeah you know, so he was a little bit redeemable but right maybe. yeah and i mean that's the thing that sort of like bummed me out it's like i would have I would have wanted him to stick it out a little bit longer. I would have wanted to see like some sort of like, you know, just as much as like, you know, Gamma might be on the fence. I mean, although we're not completely clear on all that. I mean, right. we're, it's, it's the mm-hmm. jury's still out on necessarily that. But like, I, I, w- I was hoping for like, well, no, maybe he's redeemable. Maybe he, you know, he's, he's amazed by everything that we have and, and he's kind of, you know, is buying into this or whatever. Right. But no, it's like, that's kind of like was eliminated as a possibility pretty quick. Yeah. So it's like, well, yeah. All right. Very that's that. Quick. G- like Gabriel this. took that away from us. I know they kind of touched on it a little bit, but how is it that Lydia didn't recognize him? 
I mean, that's a good question. She didn't explain it. Yeah. Like Alfred didn't explain it. My daughter doesn't know you, but it's like, how does she not? Maybe the only thing she I said, think is maybe Dante joined the Whisperers after Lydia joined Alexandria. Yeah, that's the only thing but, I can figure out because how? she said, like, oh, he's new. But, but he held Sadiq down when, I Oh, don't that's know, true. Maybe. No, you're absolutely I right. Mean, he held Sadiq down during that right. time. So he, you're right. He obviously was, I don't know. It's to me, it just doesn't make any sense because Lydia didn't really join Alexandria then. She was just kind of running away from well, mom. She'd been at there for quite a while. Yeah, I, yeah, that's true. I, I don't know. She had been at Alexandria and the night of the, of the barn killings, like, Alpha confronted, right. yeah, and Alpha confronted her when um, at the movie theater and all that, and then brought mm-hmm. her outside, and then she basically decided, like, no, I'm staying here, I'm not going with you, and you know, and that was right. that. So, but I, I'm trying to remember how long. What do you think that was though? From yeah, from that moment to the Pikes. Well, they were still prepping for the. <laughs> and fair. then she, yeah, she trust him enough to hold Sadiq down, and like, I don't know, I don't know. could have been his, te- it could have been his uh, test, the test, could have been her testing yeah, him. That's true. Yeah, it could yeah. have been a test. Yeah. So she gave yeah. him a, a right. bigger mission. Well, yeah. you want me right. over? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Right. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, yeah, she, it, like, say if it, that was Megan, I bet if he had joined them at that time, she would probably test him to make him hold the deep. Uh-huh. You know, maybe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I'm, I don't know. I'm interested to see if, um, well, first of all, it'd be a really big risk if Lydia even tried to meet back up with the Whispers. But if she does and Negan sees her, that's, yeah. that's going to yeah. be interesting. <laughs> yeah, it'd be very that's, interesting. That's going to be. That that could speed up our comic book future very quickly if that does happen. Oh, if he does, uh-huh. yeah. As you said last episode too, just yeah. seeing the behavior of how she's first going hand. to treat this child, yeah, right. Mm-hmm. Getting first hand glimpse. He's already like shown that he's protective of her. So if he sees Alpha treating her in some sort of way that you know he doesn't agree with you know he he might be like spurred to react right and it doesn't even have to go down the path that you were trying to say in the last episode with um with uh, the r-a-p-e word right no it doesn't have to go down that route it could just be like the lashings it could just be like the the abuse that she just has inflicted on her for years you know yeah and sarah's like saying her whole life really yeah Yeah. Uh, mama deadhead saying uh you know alpha isn't dumb she's got plans on plans which is actually a good segue into very true and i can't believe i'm going like we're going we're bouncing around so many different subjects but like this one <laughs> like in particular as i was watching the end of the episode just before this uh recording uh we get to the end and it's like I, it made me think of gamma and like i'm sure that gamma knew where the herd was i i'm convinced and i'll tell you why mm-hmm. i think she knew exactly where that where the herd was i think uh-huh. alpha planned for the event that maybe gamma was not going to give it up or or like uh, on the in the event that she would flip or not flip even and just said let me right. just move the herd anyway you know i'm not stupid right um mm. so which kind of first oh. of all hacks our brains because like oh so where do we trust gamma do we do we trust gamma um mm-hmm. but mm. i think it's really just alpha's cunning it's like okay let me plan for the event that they come by anyway and if they do i'll be there to see carol because i know that she's dying to get to me according mm-hmm. to dante because mm-hmm. dante's been feeding her some shit um mm-hmm. right so, well i mean she can just tell from the, the i mean she, the first time she stared her down you know from like a hill to down to like a ravine the second time she took a shot at her like this Uh is like the third time so i mean she knows like this woman is carol's not letting up until like she can get to her you know so had first-hand experience with that Mm -hmm. so i mean she knows she knows how to get to her you know right alpha's got her like Uh in the palm of her hand Mm -hmm. yeah yeah i thought i wrote it down I thought the same thing. I, I thought this whole thing was was actually a um, a test for Gamma. Like when she said, "Oh, the the horde is in this you know sunken field." I think they were. I think they were there. And like you said, Alpha mm-hmm. moved them, and you know, so they show up. They're not there. We think Ga- we think Gamma lied, but actually, Gamma told the truth, and Alpha's like, he, he, he. <laughs> yeah. the The chat's kind of going off too. Like Carol needs to die already, and then oh wow, whoa, 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 Tom, whoa. Tom is like, this is like the Madison thing. Now. Oh, look at you, Thomas. <laughs> we were friends. We were we were friends. There's Let's no loyalties it. in the apocalypse, hon. Keep it that way. <laughs> I mean, apparently, Car- I don't know. Carol needs to catch herself up, yeah. but she doesn't need to die. <laughs> <laughs> 
I mean, you know, she everybody's got an opinion. <laughs> yeah. She needs to, she needs a little check, but no, th- she doesn't think, deserve yeah. to die. I think I support this. Like just because it makes you I react certain way. Killing <laughs> too much. Yeah, I just, <laughs> the reaction you want from me. I, I just want your reaction. That. Let's like without <gasps> the reaction, just like yeah. <gasps> We're, 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 just, mm, what, mm, happened, what mm. happened to our friendship, Dave? <laughs> niece is like, no, Carol lives forever. I hope she's okay. And yeah, and no, she here's the thing. I'm, I'm, I agree with Tommy saying, just keeps making stupid decisions. Al- Alpha should be head Carol. Ooh, 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 ooh. Um, mm. No, but I, I, I do agree. Like, I, as, as if you have been paying attention to the podcast, I, I've been heavily critical of Carol. Um, she is making stupid decisions. I, I think I've even said that. I, I, and I'm, I'm surprised. I agree with the poor decision making. I'm surprised with how many people are on board with just the way of thinking. Like, I mean, most people don't want Carol to die. Most people are no. afraid that no. these decisions might cause her to be killed. I have um, some theories on who I who I see dying in the second half of the season, but I don't see it being her. I no, I don't either. So. No, I, have a different, I don't I have see a different it being theory. her. Me too. Yeah. I have different theories, I but yeah. I think the show. She'll I mean, manage to pull through. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, I find it a little bit more exciting to think that she may end up going. And this show holds no quarter. Like, the, no, nobody is safe. Know. Nobody is safe. Daryl's not um, safe. I think Daryl's safe. Well, nobody's yeah, safe. Darryl's... I'm pretty sure they're safe. They I both did just yeah. sign three-year contracts. Yeah. yeah. I don't think that doesn't mean anything, Darryl's guys. They'll be there anywhere. till the end. That means, that means that they're guaranteed payment. But it doesn't mean that they're guaranteed to live. Why would they pay, why would they pay them not to work? That does, doesn't make sense. Flashbacks? No. Yeah. That no, that'll be there. No. <laughs> no. Nice try. You're trying real hard, but it ain't working. Yeah. I am. Next. Daryl. Daryl will be around to the end. Right, just because he's a cash yeah. cow. I could yeah. see Daryl getting Rick's comic book death. Like Ooh. the way Rick goes yeah. down in the comic, because it would fit Daryl's life of a recluse. Or Dwight's comic book death. Sure. I could, I could see, I could very much see. No, like the way Rick goes in the comic, I could see Daryl going that way. Mm. I honestly, I don't know, I don't know, but I mean, yeah. I think it would be poignant. I think it would be very, like, it would be very fitting to someone who lived their life as a very isolated person. You know, I don't know. I could see it, and Mm. I also, I mean. We are going off the rails a little bit, but with everything we saw with Rosita, oh, personally... Wait, hold up. Sarah just brought something up really important, which is my point exactly. Lori Holden has a, had an eight-year contract and bought a house in Georgia, and she still was taken I, off the show. Didn't she have Andrea like, a huge sucks. conflict <laughs> with... <laughs> This it goes to my point. Oh, but she just sucked. She was the pet. She was a terrible character. It was there was a terrible Why? character. I mean, there was no way she was going to last. You can make years. the argument that Carol is acting similar to Lori. You uh, can try sorry, to make I mean, that argument, but you'd be wrong. <laughs> speaking, listen. If we want to talk about trying to kill Alpha and Lori, uh, Lori yeah, was in bed with the enemy. So yes. yeah, I mean, yeah. Or, I mean Andrea, 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 Andrea with right. the enemy. Yeah. So yeah. Speaking of Andrea, little difference. <laughs> I am calling that I feel that Rosita will get Andrea's comic book death. Okay, so you're gonna have to explain oh, that. Oh, okay, okay. I can, I can see mm-hmm. it. Well, you mentioned, this, mentioned this. You mentioned this briefly yeah. in the last episode. But I can that's a good it. call. Is this something can we can it. kosherly talk about, or just mention and then people look at it I, if they want to? I th- we're seeing Rosita being this very martial, and we kind of saw it from the beginning of the season with her, her on the punching bag and like the training and all of that sort of stuff. We got to see some of that in action with Dante. Obviously, <laughs> she put those skills to use. She seems to be very concerned about being able to like protect you know, her daughter and all this stuff. And she obviously has this relationship with Eugene. Also, I could see her being very instrumental to ridding everyone of the herd or leading the horde away or whatever, which is something that Andrea does in the comic. Something happens to her during her act of saving everyone. I, I, I agree. Yeah. Fingers crossed. You want no, to no, no, I, no, I don't. No, 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 I, not that I want to you know I mean? so many you people getting I mean? canceled on the show today <laughs> you know what I mean it's like so like if she is going to go down that's a, yeah. her, a pretty heroic way to go you know it's a very epic death yes it would it's be very, it would be worthy of Rosita right <laughs> yes, so it's like you know if that's the case then fine you know if you're not if her head's not going to be in a pike then mm-hmm. have her have that sort of like yep, I that agree. sort of end to her character yeah. you a lot know? of people were saying like yeah like the people that weren't um, on pikes 
like the idea was that their deaths would be redirected into more meaningful or in a more, more meaningful, more, impactful. I wouldn't even say more meaningful, more useful mm -hmm. manners. Yeah, right. You know, yeah. useful like utility, not arbitrary. Yeah, sure. Driving the story yeah. forward. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. I, I understand that. That makes sense. Yeah, exactly. I still, I, I'm, I'm pretty convinced Gabriel's getting his moment. Oh wow! The wow. Oh, I think Coco. so. I know. Yeah, losing, Eugene uh, gonna end up with a baby? Two out of three dads. I know. <laughs> we'll, we'll definitely save that for the next show because that's gonna be kind of interesting too. Because um, I think his killing Dante in that manner is a foreshadowing. Yeah. Although I don't know, like to me, I feel like um, like this is him trying to break out of the moral compass, which is usually the right. indicator of someone dying. You know, if he got if he kept right. getting being the, stuck, being the moral compass. Yeah, if he keep, if he kept getting stuck on trying to mm -hmm. figure out what happened, what went wrong, ah, you know, reason and logic. He said, like, I can't understand the ideology. Right, right. Like he was trying to make sense out of like why, right? You know, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, and exactly. So like, <laughs> it's like why bother? You know, it's like like why, yeah. and that's him. Like why bother? You you know, this is, I, I need yeah. to keep my family safe. You know, this yeah. is what needs to happen. And I, yeah, yeah. I feel like he kind of did it a little too, just to almost not impress Rosita, but he like yeah. did it for her. You know, mm -hmm. it was, it had a lot to do with, because they're not seeing eye to eye on things right now. So I think he did a lot of it was motivated for her. 100%. Mm -hmm. I feel that. Yeah, mm -hmm. I have to take care of my family. Um, and, and again, going back to what right. I was trying to say before, it was, it, it was his way of honoring Sadiq's memory. The same thing that he did at the fair, telling everybody that people died protecting each other. And that's what we should remember. There's something mm -hmm. very important that is not immediately apparent from when people actually watch this episode. I looked up what Gabe said at the funeral and um, the line goes, let me live if life is better for me and take my life if death is better for me right now that's from the quran I wrote that down too yeah really? that's from the quran it's the hadith, it? hadith it's funny because he says a friend told him <laughs> it was a quote from his friend in in yeah. theology seminary <laughs> etc so yeah it's mm -hmm. from it's from the hadith it's that's from awesome. book 75 and uh, which is which is titled patience quote unquote which I also found kind of interesting because doctors, patients. Now, Hadith 32, Muhammad said, none of you should wish for death because of a calamity befalling him. But if he has to wish for death, he should say, oh Allah, keep me alive as long as life is better for me and let me die if death is better for me. This is a very contentious quote in Islam. Now, this quote is actually referencing a lot when people talk about, can I kill myself in order to escape a calamity? Hmm. And, and so what I have to tell you guys is, is what gave Gabriel's trying to tell everybody is what everybody is trying to tell everybody else in the community is that Sadiq killed himself. And what? that's huge. Okay. Yeah, because because of this verse, okay. this verse is what people cite when trying to figure out if we're allowed to kill ourselves to escape a calamity. Oh, see, so they don't want to freak people out. Exactly, by saying that and it's Dante not apparent. It's a not apparent to people who who are watching this episode. And I need to bring right. this up. They're gonna have to. I mean, they're gonna have to tell everybody where Dante went eventually. Yeah, they're right. gonna have to address it <laughs> or not. They'll well, just say somebody's the gonna need a him. doctor. <laughs> Well, Those doctors are gone. They'll just say the whispers got him somehow. I mean, he was on a run, yeah. you know? Um, Case closed. Uh -huh. And they burnt his body, so there's no evidence. They did burn his body. But can we yeah. go back to the right? suicide thing? They erased that. Yeah. I mean, let's go back to the suicide thing. This is crazy. Who's going to believe that, though? Honestly. I mean, I get, like, I get, like, it's a, it's you know, Gabriel. that's what they're saying. But who was who is going to believe that Sadiq killed himself? I mean, I mean, if you go back to his behavior, people are trying to reconcile, you know, you know, basically what, you know, his behavior matched with his actions and stuff like that and his inability to sleep, which everybody knew about. It's, it's, I can see why the show would not want to make that apparent, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, and I, I mean... Unless, unless people know that history, that's not what they're going to take from it. Right. I mean, are mm -hmm. they going to tell people who are the ones drawing, like, Silence the Whispers? I mean, I mean. Well, and now we all know that. We all know. The yeah. person right. who, yeah. Well, that's going to be mm -hmm. interesting trying to explain all that. But it could be explained away because there are certain people you would suspect of doing that. Like the kids. Well, it was those people that beat her up. And, and yeah. the high women. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Gage. Et right. So. <laughs> I even accused Carol. <laughs> we, yeah, I was yeah. on board with that, yeah. by the way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, and and there there comes the question, right, which is not answered: is that did Carol or did Dante release Negan? 
Yeah, we still don't have an answer to that. We st- yeah, we still don't have an answer. I, I mean, I still think Carol could have. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, she's uh-huh. I def- she's definitely on my sus- list of suspects. Or, I mean, it, it very well could have been, maybe it was Dante. He mentions Negan. What, the scene that we're referring to in terms of when Dante says, or what to do with Negan, like whether or not to kill Negan, he does mention that specifically. However, he doesn't really mention explicitly that he let him out. So No, 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 yeah. We don't know. If Dante did let let Negan out, don't you think it would have been part of his little montage backstory? I mean, we saw everything else that he did. They could have slipped that in there. Yeah, exactly. They could have. Exactly. But it's like one more little thing, right? It's one more little thing. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And it would make sense. I mean, letting Negan out is obviously going to cause animosity in the community. And that was what he was there for is to cause a ruckus. Right. Yeah. Letting Negan out would would do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We were discussing the timeline in which Dante came to Alexandria versus, you know, um, uh, Lydia and all of that. So, so this must have been like the perfect spot where Dante was able to leave before Alpha told the rest of the Whispers that she killed Lydia. Because otherwise, he's the only one who knows Lydia is still alive. And would she allow yeah, that? Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, to probably even to watch Lydia in some ways. Well, she says to. Lydia doesn't know who you are, but does he know who she is? Would he even recognize her? Well, I mean, obviously, well, everybody's pointing point. and staring at her, but, but yeah, but I guess he could figure that out. He could but figure it that out. That wouldn't be that hard. It wouldn't be that hard. But did he know? <laughs> I'm just going to repeat what I say. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm agreeing with you. <laughs> isn't that the whole reason why he paints Silence the Whispers on there? Isn't to, that like, the whole reason? frame it's, Lydia? Not to frame her, but I don't I don't know. To, not only to mess with the Alexandrians, but also to bring up that fear. And That is great. That, that Lydia is, you know, she could turn at any moment and... You know, okay. Go back. All right. So yeah, kind of a message directing towards her. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Because right. at the time, like, it, it is a good mm. idea to. That's really great because if you go mm-hmm. back to the beginning of the season and you you watch going forward again, you see Alpha having a hard time letting go of Lydia. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. building that little baby bird's nest or big watch well, kind of a big bird nest, <laughs> um, and trying to reconcile what she quote unquote did or didn't do uh, with Lydia as far as Lydia's concerned. So I could see her making an irrational decision to have have Dante not only like make others suspect you know each other but also to kind of push Lydia right. out so that they can take over I, I think mm-hmm. that's a good idea because like I think there if Alpha can get everything that she wants her cake too she would have Liv- Lydia back and she would probably probably and this is maybe on my opinion but maybe I can get you guys to respond like she would get her cake and eat it too in spite of the ramifications to everybody else like say, you know her saying right. she killed her daughter mm-hmm. and she, if she can push her out before anybody else has to die then she gets everything she wants and she could probably get everybody into the fold again now is that is do you think that's even a thing that's possible or well yeah if lydia comes back and anybody even questions alpha like well hey you said she killed her she'd be like yeah what about it <laughs> right <laughs> argue with me did yeah, I, I, did. I did yeah i did say that i lied what are you gonna do about yeah. it yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, exactly. Get the Jolly Green Giant over here to say something about it. Come on. Right. I mean, Which, like, well, that's they'll the come thing. at you for, like, anything. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, if you really, really think about Beta, it, I he is sympathetic, you know. To, Blind to loyalty. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Fiercely so, loyal. Yeah. I mean, you saw, admirable. That, you saw that little showdown, well, and right? Well, he loved her, too. I mean, I feel like he loved her, too, even though he's not going to admit it. But I think he loved her, too, very much. I, I, I note that you Lydia? Said loved. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Loved and Lydia. knowing that Lydia. Yeah. yeah. Lydia. And knowing that she's alive, it almost, you know, makes him sympathetic to that because it's almost like a relief. Like, oh, you didn't kill her. Okay. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, I think, in some sort of way. I think he cares about Lydia in as much as it, as it helps Alpha. I don't think he cares about Lydia that much. I, no, I, you don't I, think I, so. I think he's more ambivalent. Hmm. I, I think he's more interested in keeping Lydia safe in as much as it keeps Alpha happy. That's how okay. That's okay. how disconnected <laughs> I think he is from reality. Is that okay. I, I, think he has, yeah. I think he has genuine feelings for her. I mean, he can't Nine. ever acknowledge <laughs> them. I know. He would never be allowed to acknowledge them, but I think he does. I, I, I do. I believe he has genuine feelings for Lydia and care. I think you'd mm-hmm. like to think that. I would like to think <laughs> that, so I'm going to. <laughs> <laughs> That's I, an awesome I response. <laughs> yeah. 
Sat down. Anyway, so I might be wrong. Yeah, yes, I mean, yeah, we're probably we're probably both wrong. Uh, who knows? Who knows? Maybe maybe Beta will have a gamma moment and then maybe. go into whole rage, and that's oh, when gosh. Megan makes his move. Yeah. Well, yeah. Beta's looking at Alpha right now, the way Daryl's looking at Carol. Yeah, parallels. Right? Huh? Mm-hmm. I think that's very interesting. It's very very interesting. And what's Beta up to? We haven't seen him in a little in a, in a little while, so I know, know, right? My heart is broken. <laughs> I do want to go back to Gabe uh, in the cell with Dante. Gabe. Just like looking at the scene in my head and that whole primal scream that he does. Like like even when Dante's down for the count, like he just lets out the ah, and then he jumps on him again and just stabs him in the chest some more. Yeah. Like I, I just I'm just trying to go through what because it made me immediately think of four walls and a roof. Mm-hmm. Like like him catching uh, up yeah. to with the Rick. Group is. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Him watching all this happen in front that of That was eyes. a classic episode. I feel he got a catch up lesson somehow. Like he's been skipping yeah. around in terms of his his like evolution. Like like, oh let's embrace yeah. logic first. Oh wait, let's go back to brutality. Which is why but I'm not so. He started off con- with brutality. I mean he locked his entire congregation out and listened to them die. Oh but he did he took the easy way out on that one you know what i mean he did he did you know? but that was yeah. pretty brutal to hear yeah. that it was pretty and to heinous. not do anything about it and he it. didn't see all these people die that's the thing like, he when, didn't see them die no when but you can shoot was, a bunch of people like from miles away it's very easy to not connect right. it you know but like right. now he did kill them though yeah yeah yes he did <laughs> and he, he got to see the, he got to see the aftermath of that too he, yeah yeah you know so he's yep. skipping around in my opinion like uh, right like, uh, on, on how he's evolving too which again mm-hmm. it, i, I, I want to go back to what i said it makes me think that he's not i don't think he's 100 percent on the chopping block i think this is just going to make him in some ways stronger you know mm-hmm. yeah oh yeah no i don't i don't think there'll be repercussions for this i mean not no. within the community maybe May- karma but not not within the community maybe within himself <laughs> I, I yeah. think there's going to be yeah. some things to reconcile but because then yeah. you you'll see maybe a sort of drift between he and aaron aaron is trying to go back to his ways the original alexandria the the original person trying to bring people in you know that part of himself and he ha- and it's kind of like the rick effect where rick wasn't untethered because carl was around aaron is not untethered because he has gracie around and mm-hmm. so he can go back you know he-, he has like a pathway and anchor to go back first of all that scene with gracie is what we all need yeah because i yeah. need to have more scenes with he and gracie it just makes sense yeah. to me yeah yeah it's good to see him as a father mm-hmm. yeah 100 you know that yeah the, it's that also Aaron scary. That we all know and love. Right. It's also scary right. to see these scenes because as soon as they touch our hearts, they're going to kill somebody. <laughs> yeah, I know. You're yeah. so cynical. <laughs> it is well, really you cool know, to see. We've had yeah. 10 years to, to, you know, pick up on this. And that's right. how they hack your brain. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's cool to see Aaron doing what pretty much what he's doing in the apocalypse, what he used to do in prior but the apocalypse, like going into these horrible situations and trying to be this ambassador and this good person. Mm. And it's good to see him doing that now with the Whisperer. Like he's he's not giving away too much, but he's almost letting his guard down, but for a purpose. And, right. mm-hmm. you know, yeah. trying to recruit her and get her on their side. It's good mm-hmm. to see him doing that sort of stuff again. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, I agree. Um, <laughs> Dave, you better say Sarah's comment. No, I will. I will. <laughs> I just like to keep you in suspense. No, not me. Her. She's <laughs> losing it. No, I'm, looking, I'm, looking, I'm looking right into your soul, Sarah. <laughs> okay, we'll get to it. We'll get to it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> sorry, I couldn't help it. <laughs> um, I'm sorry. She's killing me right now. Um, okay, okay, okay. So we go to we go to uh, the, the scene itself, and okay. So when Aaron is talking about when Aaron is talking about the states, and he's also talking about the uh, happening upon the Indian ruins or the Native American ruins, I almost got a sense. First of all, I, I get the sense we have to keep in mind that again, Aaron is like one of the original only like uh, among Scott, which is played by Kenrick Green, Sonequa Martin Green's husband. Mm-hmm. You got Aaron, and you got a couple of other people, by the way. Like I think uh, not Birdie, because she's Hill Hilltop but there's another character you got like a select like a woman yeah, yeah yeah you know who i'm talking about mm-hmm. it's like around the yeah. time where mm-hmm. maggie was trying to kill negan in the cell she was advising right. yeah so mm-hmm. you've got like yeah. three people pretty hair yeah yeah yeah, yeah. you got mm-hmm. three people possibly who were there before rick's crew ever came into alexandria right and so like no, he honestly, is yeah. of this tribe he is a, of, of a time that's lost you know like a what could have been and and right so there's an iron 
irony of him regaling Gracie with the story. But then, and, and I'll, I'll go back, Sarah. I'll go back. Don't worry. But like, as the scene ends and you see the, the license plates on the wall, which again, hail back to him trying to get the license plates from different Aaron. cars with yeah. Daryl, you know, his, his little buddy times with Daryl, which is why I thought he was gay also. Anyway, so going back to the license plates on the wall, it was kind of cool because you start to realize, oh, wait, this isn't just about, this isn't just about Alexandria. This is about like the way things were in the United States or saying, or like, or like established boundaries and borders. Like these states are from a time before. All of this is from a time before. And it kind of mm-hmm. gives you like a bigger picture of like, oh, this, we're in, this is the new world. This is the, this is you the world before. The world before. Exactly. Mm. Hence the title. And so it really well, kind of hit me like a ton of, and this was just yeah. before the podcast. I was just like, oh, this is the world before. Okay. So that's all I know. There's about a that. double nod to the name of the episode but let's finish with Gracie first. Okay. Yeah, cuz we have to get to the thing. Now, nah, let's just skip it. I'm kidding. When when Aaron <laughs> You are so mean. And by the way, <laughs> Oh I have to point this out and it's not it's uh, uh, to be fair when when I when I first saw this Aaron high fives Gracie with his metal arm that's mm-hmm. all I saw then heart still beating um which is Jamie Jamie she pointed mm-hmm. it out that mm-hmm. like oh it's not only the high five on the funny arm like why would you high five somebody with your bad arm uh but Gracie has like a mitten or like a glove of some kind that looks like yeah. Aaron's metal yeah. arm to kind of like oh daddy sweetest thing so ever yeah. it so really is cute. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I, I think it's good to point out, like, so when you do watch that scene over again and you see the, the actual glove, which is, by the way, like, I thought it would have like more of a slap sound. So like when you watch the scene and see the actual glove, it's like, oh, that makes sense. It was more of like that a makes sense sound. Right. Yeah. Cute, like orange, <laughs> orange, brown or like a yellow brown glove. It's cute. Yeah. so cute. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's so I cute. I love all those little, these little, little things. And to think we were just going to skip it. Like, you know, we weren't going to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> no, that needed to be addressed for yeah. sure. For the mommies whose uteruses are contracting. <laughs> Absolutely not. And Dave. Too. <laughs> Dave, Dave uter- Dave's uterus I, is contracting. I have enough children. I can I'm, enjoy I'm the cuteness uterus. from afar. I'll take yours. That's fine. <laughs> Anyway, so uh, <laughs> wait, what does that mean, Dave? I don't know, Dave. Uh, we do have something that we need to talk about because it has something to do with talking about something, which is Daryl and Carol. Yeah, we got to talk about this. We got to we got to talk. It's finally coming to a head. There's two scenes in particular that I'm talking about. I'm gonna sit over here. Yeah, in in, in the kitchen, right? <laughs> yeah. No, it's I'm not gonna, gonna it's not gonna here. turn out it's not gonna turn out as bad as you think it is. <laughs> <laughs> because you know it's going to happen. Uh, Dar- Daryl's I'm going to get it. shit on. <laughs> no, no, I don't think so. I, I don't really think so. I mean, your feelings are going to get hurt, but you know, other than that, um, feelings, feelings are overrated. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. I mean, Daryl's really, really trying hard to kind of say, Hey, why didn't you clue me in on this Lydia thing, man? What did you do? What did you right. do? What did you do, Carol? <laughs> I cried harder during that scene than when Sadiq died. <laughs> And the I'm not kitchen, even gonna lie. In the kitchen or the one afterwards? Uh, all of it. The whole the whole Sadiq situation. Oh, wow. I cried harder when Daryl got in Carol's face and said, I'm the one you tell. Oh right. Ugh. But let's I go back to, to the kitchen. Puke and cry. What what made yeah. you what made you ball in the kitchen though? What what was the thing? Nothing in the kitchen. Sorry, I thought we were talking about the later the the bigger talk. God damn. That one did, right. No, God that that the talk in the kitchen didn't bother me at all, actually. Yeah. I was I was about to be bothered because it seemed like Carol wasn't telling him everything again, but then little by little we we find out she did tell yeah. him. Yeah, like little bird. What cat. happened out like, there? Like and not mm-hmm. even like Johnny come lately, right? It, it's kind of mm-hmm. like I mean, you're supposed to let me know. We talked about this. Yeah, Car- Carol's losing her mind. I I've agreed with that yeah. all the time. She is going crazy. Well, it's she's this- leading with her heart. She's not mm-hmm. thinking. She's She's do it using. She's thinking too much with this. She's yeah. leading with Henry's yeah. gone. I lost Ezekiel. I can't go back to those feelings because it reminds me too much of Henry. So I want to kill the person that made that go away. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I would say she's leading with her impulses, but she really isn't. Like there is a no, methodology. It's, it's 
too much heart. And I think yeah. that's what she was so scared of when she lived in that house by herself was getting too close to someone again. And obviously she didn't want to kill anymore because it was affecting her, but she got so close to those girls and then she ended up having to kill them. And then she got so close to Sam and then she had to, you know, he died. And it, and obviously her daughter, Sophia, it's like she just, she let her guard down. It was great for a long time and then someone took it away. Mm-hmm. And now she has someone to blame other than herself, I guess. Yes, yeah. the object of her frustrations. Yeah. Yeah, it, she has a she has an outlet to like go to rather than herself. Yes, so. yes, I agree. But yeah, and that's the, that's the hardest part is knowing that you know it, knowing that this isn't her fault at all. And maybe right. mm-hmm. maybe maybe there is an element of fault because you know I'm sure it, she's thinking it in her head. Yeah, I mean you always do that. Yeah, I think any what if mo- I would have done blame this themselves. or what if I would have yeah. done that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Well, specifically, what forever. Like, mm-hmm. if you really wanted to get right. into specifics, it's her letting Henry go to Hilltop, and which started the whole avalanche, yeah. Yeah. Of the, the ball rolling on this yep. whole thing. Yeah. And then if you go back to those scenes, like she's really, really emotional, like letting, learning to let him go, like not be there, protecting her after having just uh, 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 set a whole slew of savior remainders on fire mm-hmm. to protect him or to never have that shit happen to him ever again. Right. Which, again, I, we, I keep finding myself going back to that scene in my head and finding reasons to justify that happening and 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 yes it establishes something but it's just so jarring to kind of mm-hmm. see her do that but now that now that we're like a season yeah like a whole season ahead looking back at that there's more like i it makes more sense now than it did back then to me a lot of people attributing her behavior to i mean what is called the caffeine pills but since dante was the one possibly prescribing them i mean is do you think there's right. a possibility to her behavior being attributed to that rather than her I think her behavior could be attributed to the I mean not the pills themselves but the fact that they're keeping her awake and now she's delirious but like not a direct side effect of the pills but just the fact that she hasn't slept in god knows how long yeah so you don't think she slept on the boat right yeah I do I think that's probably the last time she slept Mm, okay. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. the last time that was the last time she had some peace. Yeah, I mean, I that was her silence. That was her shutting everything out and shutting everyone out was going on that boat. Her cocoon mm-hmm. moment. Some people say like being on the water, you know, curled up. It's kind of like being in the womb, like free floating almost. Maybe while she was on the boat, she hoped that our group would have taken care of the whispers by now, and, and then she gets back and finds out not right. only are, not only are they still around, now we're following their rules. Like I'd be through the roof too. That's a good point. Right. Huh? Yeah, yeah, you got me on that one. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. I, gotta get I don't think I... anybody is questioning why she's upset. I think no. everybody understands why she's upset, but yeah. her actions are are all over the place yeah. and mm-hmm. and cannot all be over justified. The place. Yeah. I, I and, won't even and say I that. I can admit that. Like I I I, I under hmm, I understand her motivations. Like I understand why she's doing what she's doing, and it's very it's nice very like me. <laughs> diabolical. It's very calculating. I don't think she's leading yeah. as much with her heart than than this weird, almost like okay, if you really want to put it into words, think of a fact walker think of like a because a walker is all about id it's all about desire it's all about you know everything else doesn't matter i just want to eat like carol is acting kind of like a like a world war z zombie she's fast walking Mm -hmm. she has like but like she has her faculty she's adept she knows how to strategize and she's driven to one thing and that one thing alone and so it's very interesting to kind of do the comparison because it's that's all she wants and she'll do she'll go around if she's blocked she'll she'll Mm -hmm. jump through hoops chunk basically get what she wants she it's like almost reminds me of like a cheesy horror movie where she runs to the basement so i'm like yes i was like why are you going into the kit why are you chasing after her why are you going into the cave why are we this has never been running into a barn full of knives right (laughs) yeah chainsaws knives being held by a whole bunch of people i know yeah right but daryl even says it he's like are we not going to talk about how this could be an ambush when they were like talking about like you know the right. whole word and all this sort of stuff he was like hello I, this is we're not even going to discuss he's thinking the- right not he's thinking. Like, not- thinking right it's like are we not even going to talk that this might be a possibility here it's like yeah, yeah this like- is back in the kitchen again still right yep. yes right yeah, yeah. and it's and like what do you want to do just now and this is like the fans by the way like i hear this from the fans before this episode aired the fans were saying what do you expect her to do nothing and that's what carol says in the episode she goes so what we, we should can't do nothing do Mm -hmm. And so, like, there's this weird thing where you kind of agree with both. I agree with what Carol is doing, just not always how she's doing it. (laughs) I understand the reasoning behind it, of course. 
Yes. I just think the execution could be done better. Can it be? Yeah. yeah. I mean, with the information that they have, though, right? It's, it's, well, or they don't the, have. That's the thing. And they think that's Carol's point. Yeah. It's like we're operating off of stuff we don't, information we don't have. No, mm-hmm. I would not note one thing about that kitchen scene is that Daryl makes it a very, very obvious, no, I don't know about obvious, but like his point is as follows. We're going to find Lydia. That's, that's what our mission is. Our mission isn't as much about Aaron's information about the Horde as getting Lydia back because he understands that having lydia is like well like carol says like a shield but i'm like but like michonne says though it is like hey as long as she's here we're safe yep right and she thinks that and she thinks that because alpha won't attack a community that her daughter lives in yeah that's the presumption that's the presumption and Mm -hmm. even with the information that dropped probably i don't know because any 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 whispers she sends or they capture they'll know yeah i mean i get that daryl's feeling really protective over lydia and everything but what what is the urgency? I mean, besides besides protection for us, is is that his mission to to get our protection back, or is he genuinely worried about Lydia? Because to me, that seems right. like just just a little bit silly because she's lived over half her life in the woods. Like she. she she can handle her stuff. I think it's a little <laughs> bit of both, but I actually, I'm actually more on the page of like, I really do think he cares about her. And, and secondly, right. Carol and did her dirty. Her. Yeah. yeah. Oh yes, yeah, she did. Yes, yeah, she did. Maybe he just wants to find Lydia and be like, I didn't do, I didn't know anything about that. I'm not a part of that. <laughs> yeah. That, that was this bitch right here. That was, <laughs> that was right her. there. <laughs> all her. <laughs> I think he can relate to her in a lot of ways, you know, with, uh, cause he knew exactly when she was in the, the prison at Hilltop with the, um, like the, with the treat that's the switch you know yeah um he knew what that those were and he knew when she was telling that story that it wasn't her dad it was her mother and he knew he knew mm-hmm. kind of like the psychological stuff going on in her head and things like that so i think he can relate a lot to her and even when alpha comes to get her the first time he says something like yeah, yeah, yeah. like that <laughs> Wait, what was that much. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome <laughs> That was awesome is what Wait, it was. Wait, repeat what you said? <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, it was Daryl speak, right? Or it was. Yeah. It was that gruffy voice. <laughs> How was no. your gruffy voice adorable? No, I need to re-edit that into the episode. <laughs> Say that again. <laughs> You can't ever. I can't do it again. Ah, <laughs> I, can't do it. <laughs> I can't do it. So let's talk about the second time Daryl puts the slap down on, on Daryl puts the slap down on Carol because right, this is what made me cry. This is what makes all of us cry a little. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's it's just a really weird thing. Can we stop this shit? Right? I feel it. Doesn't it sound like I was just telling that to all of you? Can we just stop this shit? <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I appreciated the. the... I appreciated a lot of the dialogue in in this episode in general. I felt it was very real. Yeah. Not contrived. Right. Yeah. Did you also feel at the same time that in some ways this episode was almost like hurrying to come to a close? Like we we're trying to, I know that Wrap sounds very, that statement of mine sounds very contrived because they are trying to close out the mid season, but I feel like they were just trying to tie out specific loose ends really quickly. Like, like again, it does go back to Dante and like how mm-hmm. quickly we, okay, get off the show, please get off the show. <laughs> okay, okay. 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 Burn the, bo- burn, burn the body. Burn the body. Burn the body. This never happened. This, right. this never happened. Right. So they committed suicide. <laughs> Like, goodbye like, and not again so that's why i brought that up but but also like the idea of like even this carol daryl thing like we're trying to like we're trying to push this you know daryl can can you say can we stop ah, this crap. shit stay it so mm-hmm. i just feel like even their dialogue is a bit like can we, like daryl chop chop tell her what's what <laughs> Yeah. Can you hurry? Right. Yeah. yeah. The, the, that whole conversation by the end of it made me feel like, um, well, okay. At the end of the conversation, I felt this way, but then three minutes later, when we see what Carol does, that feeling was completely gone. So at the end of this talk, it made me feel like maybe Alpha doesn't need to be the one to kill Alpha. Did I say Alpha kill Alpha? Carol kill Alpha. I mean, that's very prophetic. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's very prophetic, yeah. actually. Right. Uh, no, but I know what you're saying. But you know, Daryl kind of you know says just you gotta you gotta let it go for you your sake like right. this, bitch, this bitch is already dead she's right. already dead yeah. you don't really need yeah. to worry right but what's the key thing that he says that really really drives home what i've been trying to tell you guys because it's about me (laughs) is like she's a dead woman anyway we have a future Mm -hmm. don't let her take that Mm -hmm. too and that's the thing that i've been saying is like you're 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 holding this whole thing up you're holding all of our progress up Mm -hmm. as people who are alive and then it's very cruel but for someone who has who is dead 
know? No. You are wasting everything you have, you know, everything you have with each other for someone who has died. Mm-hmm. I don't think Daryl's thinking about a future. No. Which is what Daryl says. It's like, you right. are, you're abdicating your, your present and your future for this no. cause. If yeah. she's willing to die taking out Alpha, whose place is it to tell her she's wrong though? Uh, that's it. That, that kind of brings up the whole euthanasia <laughs> point, doesn't it? In mm-hmm. some ways, right? Like if I can die for a mm-hmm. cause. Mm-hmm. That's so. Let's bring that to the fore, because because Kate's like, here Dave goes, about to be headed, hated by everyone. That's true. Well, that's, that's, true. The, that's sort of the feeling that I've been getting from Carol so far. Is everybody's like, oh, she's putting everybody in danger, but that's not how she sees it. She doesn't think about the fact that she's putting everybody else in danger. She just wants to end this, and if that means she dies in the process, then it's worth it to her. Yeah, but what happens after? Right. She's not thinking about after. She wants to kill Alpha, and that that's it. That's the end. What if she never gets to uh-huh. her? And in the meantime, well, people die. Then she's, she's going to die trying. <laughs> she's not thinking about that. She's thinking about vengeance. She's thinking minute by minute. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And which is unfortunate, right? She's, she's, right. she's the it most is. in the present yes. one can be. <laughs> Like, it's, it's the one time. Important. It's nihilistic. I mean, th- it's the very definition of nihilism. There was this moment, like, right after they have this heart-to-heart. It's like, I'm the one you tell. Oh, and that like, right there. And I don't know how. And um, How and many then, people do you think related to her right there? Daryl, also. <laughs> well, I mean, in the world. I mean, people going through right. everything and needing help and not knowing how to ask for it. Mm-hmm. That was that just, oh, I felt like somebody punched me right in the chest. Seriously. Right. Yeah. Right. I mean, how many of us have done that? I mean, we can't, we can talk about everybody else all we want, but like how many times have we felt not safe saying what we need to say? It's not arbitrary. We have value. And we've talked <laughs> about this in one of our pre-shows, by the mm. way. Like, and that's why I loved when we, when we're talking about Dante, and I know it sounds like I'm swerving to the right a little bit, but <laughs> when we talked about Dante and him saying, I'm kind of awesome. Like <laughs> I got to unload a whole bunch of BS that we grew up with about being selfless mm-hmm. and i gotta say there's something to this iron Rand shit about like um unabashed self-interest because you can in the process of caring for yourself your goals your drives you can lift up others that's a thing too <laughs> like i'm not yeah. like a i'm not 100 percent in the iron Rand camp but i do see what i do see i do take value from the idea of you know caring for oneself doesn't make you like selfish i mean selfish isn't such a bad word and it's in and of itself it shouldn't be but the mm-hmm. idea of like unabashed self-interest you know not having shame and caring for yourself and caring for your own interests and then like and and lifting other people up in the process is great because it that also helps your interests that's the whole idea of helping people um the idea of community cohesion the idea of bringing each other together that is also in aligned with their self-interests it's in your self-interest to lift everybody up so that you can lift each other up you know somebody's got to be the mm-hmm. garbage man no I'm just saying. <laughs> so this is where everybody hates me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah. And so going back to this point of like saying what you need to say, our one big problem, our everybody's big problem, no matter how much you love Carol, is clue us in. Let mm-hmm. us know what's going on in your head. You got to let the class know because we need to know what to prepare for. Even if we can't stop you, we right. need to know what to expect. That's, and that's such her personality, though. I mean, she burned Karen and David without telling anybody. She blew up. Terminus without telling anybody she... She's, that's just how she is. That's, yeah. That's Carol. So I'm, a, I'm about to say yeah. something that's... Um, controversial? Not controversial, but <laughs> actually surprise. surprising. Yes, exactly. Okay. I don't blame Carol for going after Alpha. Like, n- even wow. like knowing that's a trap. Because here's the thing. I get it. I... But she put everyone else in danger. Yes. They that... didn't have to go chase after her. <laughs> this... No, they didn't have to do it. This is the Wolfman moment. This is the <laughs> Wolfman moment for... for hundred percent for sure like we have the thing is that we have a bird's eye view finally of with all the information that we have that this is definitely alpha goading carol into a yes. trap yes okay mm-hmm. it's interesting to see me be okay with carol doing what she's going to do because again this is the wolf man moment this is like we have all this information they don't they don't have all the information we kind of know that the horde was moved by uh alpha and so alpha's goading her into a trap mm-hmm and so I, I almost don't blame her for following. Like, this is her moment. You know, if she can take her out in this moment, it's over, essentially. Well, yeah, yeah. I think I would have done the same thing that Carol did, except when I got to the edge of the woods, 
I don't know that I would have kept running. I would have charged at her and scared the hell out of her. Mm-hmm. But once I realized I wasn't going to catch her, I probably would have stopped and went back to the to the group. Mm-hmm. But she killed Silas. I, no, I know. But but in that moment, I'm like, shit, I'm not, I can't get her. I'm not going to outrun right. her. I'm not going to catch up to her. Yeah. I got to, I got to be smart. But you're not her. That's, that's the, that's what, that's what I'm mm-hmm. trying to say. It's like, you're not right. her. You don't know what she's feeling in the moment. And no. Pro- and probably other guys, well, everybody's telling her, stop, stop. <laughs> I mean, do, I think she, they say that by the way, when, when she goes off, right. Do they not say stop? Yes. Don't they're, go- they're all screaming like, Carol, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I just want to make sure because it sounds like we're reversing our roles a little bit on this one. I, who, I mean, here's the thing, like acting emotionally. I, I I totally get it and and I understand it. But at the beginning of this episode, we hear Dante. Carol hears Dante say, "This is the plan. Alpha is driving you to make bad decisions." And this is yet mm-hmm. just an example of another one. Yeah, yeah, and well, and I don't blame everybody for. And this is like Sarah says the same thing. Mama Deadhead. I don't either. It's like yeah, I, <laughs> I don't blame them for for going after her because if, I don't if anything, either, but we can't blame Carol for what happens. <laughs> yeah, Carol, what do you what do you think, Carol? I mean. It's complicated. It's an impulsive... Yeah, because it's an impulsive move, obviously. And, like, you know, it's like Ashley was saying before, like, in terms of the whole sort of, like, horror genre sort of thing where it's like, don't go into the garage, don't go into the woods, (laughs) don't go into, you know... When it's like, when it, I see the mouth of a cave, I'm like, I don't know, man. I gotta go that's in probably, that cave, yo. I mean, that's go. probably not a good <laughs> no, idea. Right? You know, like none of this seems like a good idea. Well, and it's something Carol would have totally done. Like she, if she was trying to get someone to chase her, she would have had that person chase them into her cave. And it's mm-hmm. like, she's not thinking ahead. She's not. So. She's thinking very emotionally. And it's, yeah. get, it's getting the best yeah. of her instead of being strategic about, because right. Alpha has no emotion behind it. She's being very strategic and everything that she's doing and it's working in her favor because all she's doing is playing chess with everybody and just kind of like manipulating and using people as pawns in the way that you know it sees fit right because it's one side although, although it's like i don't get it though like and this is going back to dante when she was convincing him about like do this and infiltrate here and and you will come back to our group and i'm like but if i was at alexandria and hilltop what's my incentive on like destroy these communities because then I can go back and live like an animal and squalor. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like if I have water and food, you know that they're making bread on a daily basis. Like, ah, man, it's like, that's some head trip that Alpha must do to these people because I'm like, I, I would be kind of like, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, you know what? Change of plans. I'm good here. Actually. I mean, the, the hook on all of this is that it's happened before you're talking about people who saw the fall and so it's not that hard to convince people to say this is an illusion it's going Mm. to happen again it's going to be as it always is they have a reference point and that is the apocalypse and people have seen different versions of the fall happen throughout 10 years you know like uh the sanctuary falling or uh, we still don't know how that happened exactly i'm I'm gonna bring that up and even oceanside i want to know had their they had to move because all their men got killed i want to know how how many saviors ended up becoming whispers? I want to know that because uh-huh. like, I, I'm sure because we still don't know what happened at the job site when Rick, you know, had his right. moment where he like blew up the bridge and everything. And then we jumped how many years into the future and the sanctuary was like defunct and no more. It's like, I, to this day, I'm like, we, we need to, we need to know what happened at the sanctuary. Like before you go off and do a spin off on another show, like in the future and all of that, like I, I, I want to know what happened at the sanctuary. Like, that's awesome, but I want to know what happened so at the sanctuary. So we want sanctuary. a Megan backstory. We want a sanctuary backstory. <laughs> we need to know what happened at the sanctuary. Uh, I really putting, need to know. You're putting too much weight on this, on this uh, backstory stuff. I'm, I'm, j- I'm listen kidding. I'm, me. kidding. I'm, I'm with you, actually. I kind of, I feel like we're going to find out what happened somehow. I could see Dante as being a savior. Like, post-Whisper of War is what I'm saying. Like, I can see... What if something. Dante was a savior and that's why he let out Negan? Hmm. That's a really good point. Yeah, but wouldn't Negan know who he was? Well, he hasn't said anything like 
He, I mean, he didn't say anything to Brandon. He's only interacted since he escaped with Brandon. And he kind of just treated him as like an annoying little shit, basically. Yeah. Well, you know? He was very young, too. Well, he was. Like, yeah. 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 yeah, he was young. Like, he wouldn't know, like, who Dante was. But it just seemed like I could see by way of personality and all of that, like, could Dante have fit into, like, that whole savior crew? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. He would have, like, fit into that crew, whatever. Like... It's a good thing the saviors didn't know he was a doctor. He wouldn't have lasted this long. Mm. <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, either by iron or fire. Mm. Yes. Doctors either way, on. by the fire. Let's move on to Oceanside. And there's not really much too much to talk about, but I did want to bring up no. this one thing when it came to Rachmaninoff. Because um, I did a little research, obviously. Rhapsody on a theme of Paganini, and that's the, basically the theme of that piece it invokes the Dies Irae, which is the Day of Wrath. Right? We talk about mercy and wrath. Yeah. And, um, mm. and it was the uh, Planchon from the uh, Medieval Mass of the Dead, which was a requiem and uh, or a requiem mass or known as mass of the dead it usually but not necessarily celebrated in context of a funeral okay and we had Sadiq's funeral the opening words of, of Dies Irae the day of wrath indicate this poetic composition speaks of the day of judgment in fearsome terms mm. you know and then it appeals to Jesus for mercy so like <laughs> wrath mercy mm-hmm. so that's why that mm. that piece is like so prescient mm-hmm. I just I just thought you guys would find that entertaining Hmm. I find that very interesting. You know how I am when they pick pieces of music to drop into these episodes. Right. There's always there's always a deeper meaning, and I just I love it. Yeah. I love the detail that they put into it and everything. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah. and and so we see the quest for um for Luke to find this piece of music, which by the way. I love that he's still on the show. I will forever vie for him to be a part a part of the show. I will not be happy if he goes because we need him. We <laughs> definitely need him. That all the banter between he, Michonne, and Judith in this episode was just so well needed. Like to see to see Jules. It's like stop that, stop that. You're naughty, Judith. <laughs> <laughs> I love it when he's when he's in the library right after he finds the the music and he's you know he gets attacked right and he's <laughs> he like his, rolls his eyes leg. yeah the ones on his pant leg and then he gets it and he's like oh help, help. <laughs> like he sounds so annoyed to ask for help oh my god it's like here we go again right. typical Luke I right need help I laughed out loud it was so funny oh my god I can, it's hard to kind of separate him sometimes from like the um the Goldberg pl- character he plays if do you see the Goldbergs by the way I highly no. recommend uh you watch that show because and he has a recent episode where um where he actually because he's he basically plays the father's brother the uncle I think his uncle Marv right and um and he's just this cr- incredibly bad fuck up he's such a fuck up on the show like as an uncle he does like almost the impossible in terms of how badly he can fuck up in this last episode it has to do with thanksgiving <laughs> oh jeez! like they're on their way from one end of philly to another and somehow he makes it to pittsburgh <laughs> 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 just, don't worry i got this <laughs> And everything he does makes everything worse. You're like you pulled a Marvin, you know, like et cetera. So, and again, like he just keeps getting skinnier too, by the way. It's, cons- yeah. it's insane. It's on purpose, right? Like there's not anything wrong with him, right? Or, or not. Oh, never Un- mind. Unclear. Are you no, talking about Jan Fogel? Like he's getting oh. skinnier too. Oh no, he's, like, he's made it a point to, to address yeah. this, by the way. He said he okay. was having health issues and he was saying like, hey, I just needed to put an end to this because I was reaching capacity okay. in terms of my health. And he's like, he, okay. all he did was basically the way he to quote the way he put it he said like i just had to stop putting in things with ingredients of like three or four more ingredients it's like i'm just keeping it simple vegetables you know minerals you know for him. yeah it's yeah. crazy and that he even yeah. had to say something about it on instagram it was a long thing yeah and he, well, yeah, people he was were just probably saying, worried yeah he exactly very fast yeah yeah well it's fast to us but like i could but see that's it. true that's true I could see his transformation start from last year. Mama Deadhead saying, uh, people are so passionate like he is about his music. I just want to hug him. He's so cute. Or he is mm-hmm. cute. I'm like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he's adorable. It would be extra heartbreaking to lose someone like Luke, too. I don't want to overpass the uh, the little moment between uh, Ezekiel and Carol, too. Yeah, and, I did want to go back to that. And what he says is very um, foreboding. <laughs> Carol had a nickname, too, right? The Queen. They just they it, called her Queen Carol. The King and Queen. Yeah. The queen who abdicated her throne. Mm. Mm -hmm. But kept the ring. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Well, <laughs> she tried to give it back, though. She did. She tried. To her credit, she did. Yeah. Ah, yes. And he's like, he's like, no, nah, no, nah, you keep yeah. it, shorty. This is good. I'm going to keep this. There's some right things to do. Keep it, shorty. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> <laughs> but like, all I wrote was really what it must have been like to see the man who had such a tremendous burden, you know, all the PTSD, empty mm. himself out before he slipped away and then never empty out your own before it was too late. Like yeah. Zeke. Yeah. Yeah. It was an opportunity and he didn't take it. And he still yeah. didn't take it. That's the point. He still didn't well, take it. Well, no, he still didn't. No, he didn't. I mean, and the look on his face too, like, I mean, he was just like radiating this information like read my mind read my mind like oh it was heartbreaking to watch him look at her too what i wrote down was what he said um Mm -hmm. i thought he was one of those people who would live forever and there have been so many characters like that on the on the show right but obviously we know the walking dead likes to pull the rug out from under us and kill anybody at any time and i just i found that very um very foreboding like it was almost foreshadowing um his own i couldn't tell like his own death or yeah, I think that's coming. You know, you know, or or possibly hers. And I, and I was like, oh, you just, yeah, you that's a good mouth. point, too. Like, it could be yeah. hers. I mean, I don't like talking about it. <laughs> But I mean, but the you, way it was no, set up. it's good that you are. That's the, that's the feeling it, it gave me. Like, very foreshadowed. You know, somebody we thought would live forever. Like, yeah. mm-hmm. right. that right. would be a bomb dropped on That's us. almost for us. That That is almost for <laughs> us. Like, it's like, it, it's almost like a commentary to the writers. Like, yeah, I thought he would live forever. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. like, you know? It's like, oh, just like Carl. And yeah, well, technically he was supposed yeah. to live till the end, you know? Right. But it's just, it's just very fascinating. It's almost like a commentary to the writers. Yeah. I thought Jesus would have lasted a lot longer than he did too. Yeah. Right. Well, so Jesus maybe, is another disappointment. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Missed exactly. Opportunities. And especially like the anniversary of his death was like this week, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, oh, well, true. You know, last year, but, uh, right. <laughs> but you know, the first anniversary of him dying. I know, right? At least the one Jesus had a resurrection. Mm. Right. Um, but um, well, I know he is back as the prodigal son, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that which yes. is hilarious. He's on Fox. Right? <laughs> yeah, guys. Check it out. <laughs> <laughs> I do want to hit that point because you open the door on that and that's it, it's almost like as if it's a signal to us to say nobody is off the table somebody's exactly. gonna die we know someone we know we're gonna lose somebody um Seth Gilliam mentioned a death dinner on Talking Dead yeah that and, and Norman Reedus did it in the in the um at when Brandon Davis was interviewing him on the carpet on New York yeah. Comic Con too, so it's like and I didn't and I didn't get the impression that it was Avi Nash's uh, death dinner. Yeah. No, it seemed like, like it was later. somebody else's. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, anything is possible. Yeah, but it most likely is somebody else's, and it's right. Could be somebody epic. Well, know? I'll throw my theory out there right now because I think you did. You guys both read the the comicbook.com article by Cameron Bon Bon Bonomolo. Bonomolo? That. I think I did about Jules potentially being another whisperer. Everybody's saying I that though, care about that. and yeah. I kind of want to go back to that, by the way, because I thought she was in that camp that found Dante. Uh, this was, is uh, was she one of those people that walked that walked in with him? I I, I had the impression that, that not walked in with him, but like found him oh. and saved him. It's Alexis Gambati, I think it is. She's Greek. Oh, I haven't looked up that. So I, I I thought that was her, and I really want to yeah. pull the audience that we have now if they if they recognize Jules from. Um, the time when Dante was Second, saved. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, I thought that was her. I mean, if she's in that group, then I would I would safely say that that rules her out. Yeah, but I I, did, I just didn't notice, and I thought it was an interesting theory too. I mean, yeah, we're seeing I do think Luke, so too. And he's developing, you know, these feelings for Jules, and he's gonna, you know, go and be with her, and then if we find out she's a whisper, she might kill Luke. Yeah. But I think that's almost too formulaic, though, don't you? I, I mean, at this point, yeah, like, at even this if they point. were going to do that, I would I would scrap it at this point. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Even if, I, even if that were what they had already done, I'd be like, nope, we're redoing it. Reshoots are a thing for a reason. <laughs> Re- yeah. Reshoot. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I would. I, yeah. I would. I'm sure. Th- and you know, maybe they, maybe they filmed both scenes, too, like both paths. They've done that before, too. Yep. Yeah. That's not unusual. We've been here. I like that they, they they even keep the cast guessing. I mean, they're filming all these scenes, and they don't even know which are going to be used <laughs> like, in the episode. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Tell us what's going to happen. I really don't know. <laughs> You're like, I'm not sure. Stay tuned for next week. <laughs> On School Walking Dead. No, we still have the ocean side to cover. But <laughs> Right? But no. I, and I that's great that you brought that up, though. Yeah. Bef- before we get to Oceanside, we got to touch on Rosita and Eugene just a little bit. They're a little... 
interaction was so cute, like so cute and so awkward all at the same time, right? Like Rosita seems, you know, much more comfortable. Oh, by the way, I need those knucks. <laughs> No, the, the, right. the, the, the spike spike knuckles. Yeah. yeah, I need that in my life. Um, yeah, so if anybody finds them, send me the link, please. <laughs> um, but but beyond that, no. you know, she seemed, <laughs> seemed a lot more comfortable around him. But he was just like so flustered and like uh, calls um, uh, calls Hilltop home, you know, things like that. And like, oh, it was just oh man, it was heartbreaking. But like, oh, I just sat there like clenched the whole time. <laughs> Yeah, Rosita and Eugene need to end up together. I, I yeah, agree. Darren. I think that'd be, I think that'd be I, I don't know. I, I, I'm I'm there's I have mixed feelings about that. And we will talk about that more in the in the episode where we talk about the sneak peeks. Yeah. But, I mean I'd be fine either way. <laughs> but, but I find that very confusing though. Because if, if that is the the direction that they're going in, and again, we're, we'll talk about this in further in the next episode. The like sneaks, what's yeah. this whole Stephanie thing? What's this home business mm -hmm. that he mentions in this episode? Well, we've also home. we've also talked about a potential death for Rosita <clears throat> too, so Eugene can have it all. Oh, like Alpha, her cake and eat it too. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that, I mean, that is what happens in the comics. Ro it Rosita is. and Eugene are together in the comics. Rosita dies, and then he sparks up this relationship, right. relationship whatever context it is, with Stephanie. Yeah, but this is a very much girl interrupted on this one. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. he's get, it's happening pretty close. Rosita may very well repay the favor that Eugene did, like, oh, helping her out there. And that may lead to her Having demise, feelings? ultimately. No, like, just how Eugene kind of, like, helped her with the walkers. Mm -hmm. I mean, Rose, in the comic, wow. Eugene is Thank saved you. by Andrea. Uh-huh. I see. I see. Which yeah. it goes back to your Rosita taking the place of Andrea's death. Yes. That's interesting. That's interesting. Yeah. I can see that very well We've happening. We've come full circle. We've come full circle. That's great. That's really great. What a way to close that loop. Huh? I mean, the fact that you brought that up allowed us to kind of... In, in, in the, the most kosher way possible, talk about it, but not talk about it. Darren's like, don't go against me, Mr. Cameo. Eugene doesn't deserve the friend zone. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. It's interesting. I mean, I, I really feel like he's moving on, but he's also kind of like also... Um, I mean, he's moving from like having nothing to having something and then having two somethings. So <laughs> I, I think we'll break that down when we go frame by frame in the sneak peeks uh, in the know next what episode. To do with I himself. Think. Um, and and Nisa's <laughs> even saying Rosita and Eugene shall kiss. I'm like, ooh, well I, then. You know, we're we're getting all worked up about it, and we got all hyped over Michonne and Ezekiel's kiss too, which ended up not really panning out into anything. So yeah, but I love the could way be, they did that too. Could be too. something like that. Yeah, yeah. could be right or. You know what? Even like this show has a way of of having us doubt everything, and if they end up doing it, mm -hmm. it ah, uh, wow, what a hack! I'll just say that much. I, it, it almost deserves to actually happen at this point, so that we go with what? Wait, that's real? <laughs> what, what? That's happening? What? Right? Stop doing <laughs> playing with my emotions, Valhalla. <laughs> Stop it! <laughs> <laughs> and Darren's like, Darren's like, I'm gonna be Josh McDermott next Saturday, and you know, I'll make sure he knows you believe he won't get Rosita. I'm like, well, I don't <laughs> think he cares. <laughs> I think he just, I think he's glad to be on the television show uh, still, to be honest. I hope. He's a good dude. I really think that he's so oh. necessary on the show right now. Eugene? Yeah. Oh, oh my gosh. Well, Josh yeah. McDermott, I mean, Eugene, the, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Everybody has such an important, you know, I was just talking to my, my brothers about this last night too, because they know I'm obsessed with Walking Dead and they were asking me all kinds of questions and, um, <laughs> you know, and every, interested. they said, right, I know, right? And they asked, you know, who, who's, who's the best character, they said. I said, I can't, that's not a question I can answer because everybody is perfect for exactly where they were cast to play the part that they were meant to play. And every single person on this show just truly embodies the character that they were, that they are. And they're, they're perfect for it. Like I can't, I can't picture anybody else playing these roles the way that they do. So it, I can't pick a, a best character. I have a yeah. favorite. But there's no best character. Well, yeah, it, it goes back to something I said about archetypes, too. Like, everybody re represents, like, a type of character, mm -hmm. you know, and, and represents a sort of strata of, like, of, of every one of us, or at least um, the idealized um, uh, versions of us. Yeah, almost like a personality trait. Each character represents a personality trait. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Ponytail and all. <laughs> <laughs> nice one, Darren. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, Darren basically says Eugene represents us in the apocalypse, minus the smart brains. That's exactly right. what I say all the time. Yep, we're all Eugene. <laughs>
Do you remember that that part of the breakdown, the uh, the teaser where um, Judith hands Luke the Russian English dictionary? Yeah, this was in the teaser. Yeah, we were saying, well, what's this all about? Oh, Luke and Judith are connecting, and Russian English oh, dictionary, yeah, yeah, yeah. and like Russian English <laughs> dictionary for Eugene satellite parts. How clever uh -huh. is this little wonder? Very so precious. Very. Yep. I just she I recognizes love a useful tool when she sees it. Yeah, exactly. Now let's talk about Virgil because I have been waiting for so long to see Kevin T. Carroll. <laughs> on the television because I am in love with it. This is, okay, this is going to be like Angus Sampson all over again, except now with, insert oh, no. Kevin T. Carroll. <laughs> oh, I hope we don't, he doesn't I'm, die. <laughs> right? I, like, when you said that, Damn that's it. the first thing I thought. I'm Damn like, it. you love that character and they took him away almost Damn immediately. It. God Damn it. It's like, I, now I have to like not find a way to love him as a person actor. I'm not <sighs> so familiar with him as an actor. What what else has he done? Moonlight. What type of characters does he do you remember Moonlight? Take on? So there's Moonlight uh -huh. with uh, Marshall Ali. Do you, do you remember him from Luke Cage? Oh, he, Luke, okay. He's the guy who played Cottonmouth. Okay. Okay. He was in that. He was in Moonlight and they were in that together. Okay. Kevin T. Carroll and okay. him. And then also in um, the new Stephen King series, Castle Rock. Oh, thank you. Okay. You um, Amazing. Is he, is, he, is he our protagonist? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I knew <laughs> I, I knew I recognized his face, but I could I just couldn't place him. And I, I watched that so long ago it wasn't going to come to me yeah i watched that though the first season of castle rock yeah, and yeah the that, one that was him better. that was him he was fantastic okay. yes yes he was okay yeah. all right all right yeah. so i that, like knowing i like knowing some of the past roles that actors have taken on because it, it it's not true but i feel like i can sort of gauge the character they're playing now based on past roles they've taken <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, well, exactly. Well, I don't know about the characters, yeah. but that's the danger, right? That's the trip because it is. I know. I am. I'm like everybody's like, oh, I don't trust that because even on the polls on Talking <laughs> Dead, uh, people running polls on on Twitter, they're like, do you trust Virgil? Mm -hmm. And everybody's like, it's like sixty five percent, no way. And I'm like, yeah, I trust him implicitly because it's Karen T. Carroll. <laughs> it's like, like, I really like him. He's such a swell guy. <laughs> I think we can trust him and and here's my here's my reason why because um, you know, right now everybody's on edge, right? Like, don't trust strangers. Don't trust strangers. Right, and so the right. viewers are being right. The viewers are being set up not to trust this person. Right. And I, I think we are eventually going to find out that we can. Even Judith, in her own way, which is interesting, because Judith was the one who found ways to actually branch out. And so, mm -hmm. and so, like, even her, she's kind of like on the fence. She's kind of like, I don't know. I'm, I'm staring at the mm -hmm. situation, mommy. You tell me. You tell me what you think, mommy. Yeah, I like yeah. how she's kind of kind of messing with him too you know sitting there going through his stuff right in front of him while he's laying there <laughs> yeah he tries to lunge at her and she's like careful um, excuse me uh you uh mr trippy jack tripper he's got this is my book Did you... uh, actually it's the library's book <laughs> Right. Did you happen to see the name of the book she was reading? Finally, I, I haven't. I actually tried to look at it myself. Well, did you see it? Did you freeze frame? Uh-huh. Yep. Oh, well, what is it? Tell the tell the clean ass. It's called The World Before. Fuck off. Fuck <laughs> off. Does it have an author? Or is it like... Okay. Uh, I... I it's dude it the the it's so brief right you only see the front of the book as she's standing up and walking away I I had to like keep I was like on my space bar like this doo -doo, doo -doo, doo -doo, <laughs> like moving frame by frame <laughs> <laughs> trying to like get it yeah well, um, let's do bottom some half of the book looked like it was in a little bit of a shadow so i didn't catch the ah. author but the name of the book is the world before so i have i have a really big question and dave i hope you can help me with this you have in the past virgil lives on bloodworth bloodsworth island this is a real right. place right i look i looked it up right that's that's not my point Naval it's an base. island it's very much an island virgil's now he's on our land how the hell did he get there where's his boat mm, that's a good <laughs> question could it have been taken or could, could have, but could, he doesn't say that. Could it have been washed away? Yeah, that's the thing. It's uh, I could I see your point. I see your point. Yeah, just another reason to be suspicious of him is all. <laughs> yeah, I mean that really does bring about the question of like whether we should trust him at all to begin with, though. Too. Yeah. If he had a boat and was able to get back by himself, then Michonne wouldn't be able to bring back the weapon. So I suppose something had to happen to his boat in order for us to find him and all of this just transpire. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> there, there's the reason. <laughs> Maybe so. Oh, you know, it's even you know, it's an even scarier thought. What if somebody uh -oh. took his boat and went back to his island without him? And now one of his people or a bad 
or a somebody, bad guy. Somebody, yeah, somebody bad. Yeah, or, yeah. What if what if something's happening on his island while he's not there? Right, with yeah. his boat. Yeah, and, and yeah. his family. And then they stranded. get back. They get him and Michonne get back, and and uh, Michonne's left to kill the baddies. Yeah, and so yeah, what does that mean when Michonne and Virgil get back to the island? You know, the, mm-hmm. the, this is like a whole other quest that will not be seen. And again, and this is something that Chris brought up uh, several weeks ago. I think re- with regards to what Michonne's trajectory would be uh, in the coming, which we may not even get to see the what happens in the games, the Telltale games with, yeah. with that oh. uh, the DLC pack, mm-hmm. um, which I plan on playing during the break because some of the, con- the all the content w- that we have to do during the break has to do with editing and just eventually releasing like interviews and experiences and stuff like that. So I am looking forward to playing the Telltale game and I will play it live, hopefully on Twitch and Mixer and all that stuff. So uh, maybe we'll get to see what happens to Michonne on Bloodsworth Island. Cool drone footage, bro. <laughs> Right? That was such a cool shot. Yes. Darren said, like, okay, I'll donate something like $30 for Dave to perform one song. It's going to happen. I'm like, okay, I'll do commissions. (laughs) (laughs) Like, okay, no problem. All right. What song? You take uh, requests? I I guess I'll have to take requests because I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm like I'm like everybody's bitch now. <laughs> <That's> funny. <laughs> okay. Okay. You know what? I guess we'll see when we put this up live, and we'll maybe we'll put a poll up or something in the middle of the broadcast. Should Dave do this? Well, I'll suck everybody's dick for for money. <laughs> oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, I'll do it. I'll do it for the show. Whatever. No, I meant playing guitar. Sorry, not the other thing. <laughs> <laughs> But okay, getting to the bottom line of all of this is that whether we trust um, Virgil or not, we have the issue of what happens to Michonne, and we'll probably talk about that more in the next episode. Is Jules a whisper? Eh, yeah, yeah. I don't know. It, it, it just seems too formulaic, like too simple. Yeah. And we'll talk about that more in the next episode too. But the one thing I want to focus on is the is what happens between Virgil and Michonne, and it's he says mercy's in short supply these days, and it's just the timing with Sadiq having told Rick this saying may my mercy prevail over my wrath this was Sadiq's words from his parents I think the shit is in the charter I'm not sure the ethos that surrounds the community the council Alexandria as a whole the charter all that kind of comes from this one act from this one person it should make the viewer the listener appreciate Sadiq's presence on the show Sadiq's words were the very spurning point of of everything that happens from that point on It, it just brings it all around full circle it lets michonne relent for one second and realize what this guy's trying to do i'm just trying to get home to my family hmm sounds very prescient doesn't it it makes you think what's uh what's rick been been doing this whole time right yeah yeah no kidding yep i it's i that right there i okay okay where to start (laughs) i (laughs) michonne Michonne, does, she has a hard time trusting people too, right? But it seems like she was really quick to trust Virgil. And I don't know if that was out of necessity Mm-mm. or because of what he says. You just meet this guy. He's stealing things. Oh, but we're going to forgive you as long as you give us weapons. I'm going to go with you alone on this boat for a, for two days. Like, you know, nothing bad has ever happened on a boat in open water, right? Like, I just feel like this is – I these are – these are ingredients for a bad disaster to happen. Well, Carol, did you and, think it was quick, though? I mean, I guess desperate times call for def- for desperate measures, and That's- I guess she probably feels that they're they're kind of getting attacked on the whisper fronts, you know, on what's happening at Alexandria. So she's kind of like on heightened alert, but at the same time, <laughs> very cognizant of the fact that like this threat over here is becoming a problem. So if this guy's got a solution, then, you know, I need a solution sooner rather than later to fix what's happening back home. Do you think it's a matter of, of her trusting him or her saying, I don't have a choice. I got to take this chance. I got to take this chance because I need something. So. Okay. That would make more me. sense to me at least. Yeah, because her yeah. trusting him, like. I, I don't think it's a trust some... thing. Yeah. I think that she's apprehensive about it, but she's okay. like, I got to risk it. Okay. So it's, it's, it's a little, worth the risk. It's a little of right. this, but a lot of okay. that basically. Right, so it's a little yeah. bit of what he says about mercy being in short supplies, but it's a lot of what he has to offer. Right? Is that what you yeah. guys are saying? 
yeah, that makes so, that makes more think, sense yeah. to me. If it's bigger... actually there to offer, is, right? Is which my is a whole other story. Yeah, yeah. right. Uh, but Judith says it too. She says this could end the war, right? And she right. said it it could, it might. Hey, if well, Judith then, says it, it's well. Right. Then we gotta find out. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, some stupid kid. <laughs> I'm kidding. Yeah, but um, I just I found it very shocking that she trusted him so so quickly. I, I found that only she didn't, based though. only based because he said the the right words. She cried in front of him. I I almost don't think she did trust him. I think it's a, it, it is a trust but verify, which is why she's going with him too, and not taking Judith just in and case not he's taking Judith not or anybody who else. He says he is. Yeah, exactly. Right, right. Like, Something goes bad. I'm I'm going to be the only one to suffer for it. Right, and in a way, there's a parallel here. Carol taking it upon herself to, to do what she oh, wants yeah. to do. What's necessary? Yeah. But what's the difference? The difference is Carol could get everybody Michonne. killed. Michonne just yeah. gets herself killed. Yeah. So okay. Let, let me ask you this. If if anybody, if anybody were to get on this boat with Michonne and Virgil, is that Michonne's fault? Is that her fault if they were to die during this venture over to the island? Is that her fault? Because we're very quick to say it's Carol's fault no, that yeah, she's I putting say... everyone in danger. <laughs> Yeah, but see, that's the but, thing. It's, it's informed. But something it's bad... informed consent. That's the difference. The difference between is that everybody on this boat, according to the information that they have, uh, is able to. They're all communicating with each other, and they all ha- they all have an acceptable amount of risk. With Carol, she's withholding information and expecting everybody to be along for the ride when they don't know what she's trying to do. That's the difference. She, the information she, she's withholding is her own plan, right? But, that's what you're referring to. Yes, exactly. Okay. Right. Um, she's the only one that yeah, knows what's I, going on that's the difference but 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 has she asked she hasn't asked anyone for help she hasn't asked anybody to come along with her they're following her Mm -hmm. and we're still blaming her for that oh in terms of the cave scene anything any any scene relating to carol whatsoever we see her try to leave and go after she says she's going hunting for negan but we all know she's going after alpha daryl inserts himself in that hunt is that her fault no but everything (laughs) that happens after that which because again that was a misdirect as well absolutely but she was going to do that she that was her plan she was always going to do that whether daryl was there or not he inserted himself into that even what what she had told him was false information do you remember right about finding it about finding the horn and then reporting reporting back yeah everything from start to finish was a misdirect you know she didn't she never she never leveled with daryl throughout the entire episode i don't i don't know that we can say that for sure no we can't that in that we broke it I don't, down. I don't, I don't, I don't, well, no, I mean, specifically the, um, I mean, specifically the information about, oh, I'm just going to look for the horde and then report it back. Like right. that might've been true. Like I mean, she's not going to take on a whole horde. But it wasn't true. <laughs> no, 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 no. The whole, her taking the, the, the whisperer hostage proves. Oh yes. That situation. That was never her intention to find the horde. Her intention was to get this hostage. And she lied to him throughout that thing. And if he would have died in pursuit of that then it is her fault because that's not what her goal she was. She didn't ask him to come. She didn't ask him to come. <laughs> but she knows that he's in tow and for the wrong reasons. So it's up to her at this point with information that she knows that he doesn't know to keep would him safe. Would the right knowing reasons that, have, would, the, would knowing have put made him any safer? Knowing would have at least gave him informed consent as a best friend. He would, yes, he would have had the knowledge, but it wouldn't have made his situation any safer. No, but it would have been more acceptable. Like, okay, now I know everything relating to what's happening here. I can, that's an Mm-hmm. acceptable risk but if he would have died not knowing the true plan her true plan that would have been yeah. heartbreaking I, okay it carol's nuts she's <laughs> she's lost it she's <laughs> off a rocker i i will admit it i will yeah. admit it what i will not admit is that she's putting people in this position because they're following her they they're going after her. They're following her. They're choosing to do this. She has not asked anyone for help. She has not put anyone in a position that they did not put themselves in, whether the information's there or not. That, oh, that's I mean, the that's... key point. That's the key point. But it, 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 that's why I say, and that's why I brought this up. That's how I no. said, I don't, first of all, that, and these are two separate things, but I don't blame her for going after Alpha. But at <laughs> this point, the rest of the group have as much information as Carol have, has, and they decide with that information to follow carol and yeah. so i see nothing wrong with that, that that they would leave them to leave carol to her own devices is ridiculous they have yeah. to go after her they have this again they have the same information that's the key they difference do, but and this is the starting point this is the starting point is sharing of information that's the starting just, point yeah. everything else is debatable well in, in my and, eyes and my original right the the original point i was trying to make though is with michonne right she is choosing to take on this mission alone but would we blame her? Would we would we hold her responsible for anybody 
Mary's death if anyone cho- chose to come along with her? Are we going to hold her responsible for other people's lives the same way we do Carol? Only if at, at the point in which she departs does not continue to share information that the rest of them don't have. That's the only reason. After that, yeah, it's I fine. agree. Sharing of information is is extremely important, and and Carol has is she could have <laughs> much uh, better help. Is that what I want to say? She could have she she could have been more helpful. She would have much more. Su- she would have much more support. Well, yeah, yeah. If she were honest and told everybody what was going on. Right. Yes, I totally agree. Right. But but I just I don't that's, know. I have a hard it. time. There's no but. I, <laughs> No, no, I have. I'm I just kidding. have a hard time holding her responsible for other people's decisions. I don't think it. No, people other, don't other do people's what they decisions do. is one thing, but if the if like something negative or something impactful would have happened as a result of them not having information that Carol has in terms of intentions, in terms of actual information that she's just withholding, that would be on her. I mean, essentially, I know. I think I know what you're trying to say, though. Because I think the general goal is is kind of the same, and which is why people will go with yeah. her. I see what you're saying there. Yeah, um, I mean they're both they're both fighting for the same thing, but taking but, very different approaches. <laughs> but and intentions do matter, right? But here's the thing: it, it's it's a mm-hmm. lot like saying, okay, it's a lot like um, having Caesar bring the people into the front line and saying, you guys are going to be a okay. We have the best reinforced steel, <laughs> and we have the the spears are all great, and you should be just fine. But Caesar knows that they're cannon, cannon fodder, literal catapult fodder, fodder. He knows that by letting these frontline people in uh, and letting them move ahead, that they're done for because the catapults will get them. Meanwhile, Caesar has already planned a flanking action to, to get to get the uh, catapults and everything else and win the war, right? Mm-hmm. But he tells the frontline people that, you know, you're going to be fine. It's going to be great. You, you, I have the best armor and the best shields. <laughs> <laughs> It's going to be great. I'm Caesar. Kiss the ring. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. (laughs) So... But you see my point, right? It's like he's yeah. in service of a greater cause. I get it. But Carol is that. And here's the key difference. <laughs> Carol is not the leader. Carol, they have a council. She's yeah. deciding upon herself to take on this role. And anybody else that dies in service of her aims. I mean, that and just like Caesar is on her. But even worse is that she's no in no position of authority. She's not. Do you know what I mean? Like. She's not. Yes. She doesn't have the will of people. You know, she has the goodwill of some of the the in the inner circle. But other than mm-hmm. that, she has no real authoritative role within the community. No, no, and and she's not. She's not telling anybody to to do any of these things either. Which is, you know, to my point, she's she wants to do this on her own, and it's like everybody keeps chasing after her. And, and I'm can't, I expect her to just be like, leave me the hell alone. I'm trying to do this. Like, just <laughs> stay there. Just get out. But I need to do this. Like, that's, that's almost like what asking, I'm feeling for her. <laughs> that, that's almost as as if they're like see that's and that's the whole other point of this coin is that like the the community is built on caring and helping one another you know it, that's how it came about and that's how it exists when we see yeah. and this is said in the episodes too it's like i think somewhere along the line in the episodes when we see others hurt we hurt or like when we see i forget which episode this was or who said this exactly but you know when we when we see somebody hurt like we all hurt and we all have to kind of pitch in or we all have to kind of help each other out <laughs> um, so when we see somebody pretty, flying pretty, off pretty the sure cliff, that was dante you're quoting dante Dante. <laughs> More of the point. He should have stayed on longer. <laughs> boop, 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 boop. <laughs> <laughs> But you see the differences between the two, and not in terms of the face value differences. I'm talking about right. Michonne. I, anybody I that would the... follow Michonne would have the same information as Michonne in terms of intent, in terms of plan, in terms of pickup, in terms of, in terms of delivery. Um, right. So they wouldn't be going in blind or in potentially blind, you know, with with Carol. Mm-hmm. Whereas Carol has not only different intentions but different. She holds different yeah. information, and those things will change dynamically as well. She's progress. not sharing her intentions. Everybody has the same information as far as the whispers go. She just Carol just has different intentions, and right. she's not telling everybody. She's not anybody sharing. She's, right, right, right. She's like she has a plan that yeah. nobody else is privy to. Yeah, and that's well, really... and I think she knows that if she does share her intentions with Daryl, he's going to talk her out of it, and Who she knows she can. <laughs> <laughs> but exactly. exactly see exactly. yeah it'll come to that she said i don't know how to tell you because you'll he knows you'll stop he knows me. who pull her out of it you'll yeah stop you'll stop me. you'll stop me from doing what i want to do yep and but he's probably the only what? one that could that's the thing she's not even giving him a chance because i've but that and that's how wait 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 and i love this conversation <gasps> 
<laughs> it's patently untrue. Do you know how we know? What? He what trusts is? he trusts her. It, it's patently untrue that he wouldn't that he would let her he would let her on her own do whatever the hell she wants. Because right. he he lets her keep taking those goddamn pills and to the point where she allows he allows her to take keep watch. He trusts mm-hmm. her that much to get it done or to get whatever done that he would allow yeah. her to keep doing this. Like, okay, well, you know, I trust you. Yeah. I don't know. Right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I was just going to say, I honestly, I finished my notes a while ago and then we just kind of kept going off. On we camera. went off the page. <laughs> A <laughs> little bit. So why don't we end it here? <laughs> Stick around for the next episode. I don't know when we're going to broadcast it. We may throw an interview in our in our way. We may do a couple of other things. But we will be having an, another episode doing the sneak peeks. So with that in mind, we'll see you in the next one, which will be episode 80. A nice little round number, right? Finally. And 80. we love you. And good night. And stay, stick around, people in the chat. Stick around. Don't move. <laughs> don't, don't move anywhere. We'll see you next time. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. <laughs>